Do you want to make your tech house bass lines shake the dance floor just like this? In this video, I'm going to share 10 tips for writing killer tech house bass lines. Make sure you stick to the end of this video because I'm going to share my signature and secret bass technique that I call the elegant bass method. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. So let's start with the video with the tip number one. This concept is going to be kind of boring, but it's essential. You have to know this, guys. And this is about the key of your bass. If you don't understand this concept, you will not make your bass line sound good. So really simple, lower keys means that you will have more dirt in your bass line. So for example, from C to D sharp, higher keys, they usually have more sub, but less dirt, say from E to B. And the middle keys is something in the middle, like good balance between the dirt and the sub. So I would say from F to a G sharp. And let me show you an example from a track that is in C and the track that is in B. And you will hear the difference and you will understand what key you can select for your next Tech House track. So let's give it a listen. So this one is in C. Listen to the bass, listen to how you feel it. And then the second track, this one is in B. So it's almost like one octave higher. I'm sure you can hear the difference. So depending on the vibe of the track that you're looking for, you can select between the lower notes or the higher notes. So again, super important, super essential. Uh, a lot of people just don't realize how important that is, but now you guys know. Okay, so the tip number two is going to be the sound selection. Good kick and bass is 70% of a good EDM track. Spend extra time to get a good kick, bass and low end in general. So for me, for quite some time, getting the good kick, the good bass was a problem. And in fact, if you don't get it right, this is the reason why your tracks may sound like crap, right? So spend some time, like really spend some time. It's not that complicated to find a good kick sample. Maybe you can synthesize a kick. I love that. Let me know if you want a separate tutorial on that in the comments. So let me just show you uh, this track and I'm going to show you other tracks too. But this is the kick and the bass. It's just sounding good on its own. And all I've done to the kick is just simple EQ. And a bit of saturation here. Super important to make your kicks not too long. So it should be like a sweet spot between like not being too short and not being too long because if you make it too long, especially in the keys like C and the lower keys, it doesn't sound good, right? If we listen, it's muddy. It's not good. So something like that. Usually for the lower keys, you want to have a shorter kick. But this one is really simple. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Keep that in mind. Okay. Tip number three, using bass melody on synths. Here's the thing. It's always easier to use what you have to add like a new layer to your music because it's already in the mix. You already have this sound. And instead of just like adding a bunch of new sounds, you can just reuse what you have because bass lines and electronic dance music is not just about the bass, right? So we can use synths and we can use the same notes from the bass line to get a really, really good sound, right? Because when we have, you know, same sounds, like same melody, excuse me, it's way easier to make it sound cohesive, to make it sound just like good. Instead of adding like a bunch of random sounds, I've done that and my mixes sounded like crap. So simple, it's good. Let me show you this example.
This sounds really cool, doesn't it? It's like, I just like it so much. It's really just as simple as that. To give an example, with some Tech House tracks, I wanted to add some sort of melody to my track and it just didn't work. I added a melody and it sounded like crap. And I was like, for this track actually, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I can just take the melody from my bass line and use it on my lead. And at the end of the day, it sounds like really, really cool. I like the vibe. So make sure you use this technique. It's really simple, but sometimes when you can't come up with a melody, that's a great way to overcome this problem, right? All right, tip number four, using velocity, note length to modulate different parameters. For example, like the filter cutoff. One thing that I see a really, really big problem with beginners is that they don't use the velocity. And even like people who've been making music for quite some time, they don't use velocity. And if you think about this, when you play an instrument, you cannot hit the, the note with the same power, right? With the same uh, amount of strength. And this is what you want to do with your bass lines, with your melodies, right? So uh, I have this bass line. You can use this in any of the synthesizers that you have. Really, really simple, really cool. And you can do the same thing with the keys, right? So with the nodes, depending on the nodes, you can control the filter cutoff. And for example, in Serum, you can use like any modulation source to modulate any parameter. The key, the key takeaway that I want you to understand, the more movement that you have in your bass lines, the better it will sound at the end of the day. So like, this is really simple. You already have the notes, you already have the velocity. So why not use it to add more movement to your bass lines? And same goes for the leads for anything that, that you can modulate with these parameters. So be creative when you think about the uh, parameters, something that you could modulate. And even, even in the mix, it sounds like really, really nice. You may think that the difference is really subtle, but in the mix, all those little nuances, all those little details, they make a huge difference. It, you just feel it. You just feel it. You may not hear, but you will feel when you have those little details, automations and movements in your mix. So this sounds way, way more interesting, right? Tip number five, layering different bass types. So this is going to be one of your favorite ones. I am sure about that. So what I'm talking about is that instead of just having like really boring bass line, say ju just like this, and I'm gonna solo that and play you with the drums. Like, it's not bad, it's okay. But it's kind of like boring to me, it's just okay. Nothing really that bad. But when we start adding more layers to your bass lines, this is where the magic is. So listen to this. This is the first layer. We want to put an accent on the kick. And going back to the presentation, say this is going to be the first accent that we decided to uh, put. So for example, really nice, like it's so, so simple, but listen again. again. So now instead of having like the same melody for this bass, what I do, I just cut this part and then I use another layer, like different character, different flavor for this one, because this is like a different type of the bass. Really nice, like listen to this. Cool, I like it. And then there's another one at the end of the bar. And then again, 
because we have those little transitions, little accents, this is the stuff that will make your bass lines sound way, way more professional. It's like super, super simple. All you have to do is just find a couple of bass types that you like. So for me, I use this sound literally in al almost every single track. This one is really nice. This bass line, I like it. So this sound, just so, so nice. And you can see overall it's like, it's pretty simple. And there's one more, you will love that. So for this bass line, what I do, I put some reverb, I put some delay. I think on this one, no delay, but still. It just creates that such an amazing atmosphere. And when you listen to the whole, to the whole thing, it's sort of like push and pull, you know, like the, the groove, the rhythm. And all together, like in the mix, it just sounds so amazing. Yeah, so it's really just as simple as that. Okay, so tip number six is going to be automation so adsr filter for this one i'm just giving you a suggestion the most common one is obviously going to be the filter cutoff on the base classic uh, but apart from that automating volume and filter envelope is super super cool so let's say that we have this baseline and what we can do uh, let's play with the filter first a bit i'm just going to show you so let's solo do like this so on the filter, maybe we want to start like that, right? And then somewhere here, we want to put an accent, let's say on the lead on some specific part of the track. Always think about when I'm opening the filter, what do I want to emphasize? What do I want to tell the listener with this move, so to say? Right, listen to this. Really, really nice. And we can do something more. Let's say that we can increase the release time just to show you. Obviously, it's not like a perfect example, but it will give you a good representation of how you can use this technique, right? So we could go from, from the decay. Let's say we're gonna make it from, from short. We're gonna go from here and just really, really increase it. You can do the same for the filter. And here we have the contrast, right? Because we close the filter and then again, you can do, you can literally do the same thing. Same thing you can do for the filter, right? So we can increase the release time. We can increase or decrease the, the decay and everything. This technique is going to be super cool if you have some sort of like a stereo bass. So for this one, we could, yeah, it, it doesn't sound like that that's perfect because the release time is kind of like too long, but you get the idea. Maybe we don't need to do it like that much. Is it in, oh right, the bass is not in mono. Now it should be good. Yeah, and to give you an example with a stereo bass, maybe we can just do like this to, again, put an accent on this part. So you can play a little bit with the stereo, with the effects. So the most important thing is to understand this. So with automation, with little details, with the accents, you can increase or decrease the intensity in the track. So when you understand this, your mixes, your bass lines, they will sound way, way more professional. Now, let's talk about the bass fills and variation. So with what I've just shown you, you can play with the variation of the bass, whether it's going to be the rhythm, the uh, sound design of the bass itself, uh, maybe just again, like automation things we talked about. Uh, on top of that, we could put some FX, we could put some synths and just combine at, at the specific part, right? So. As I've shown you, keeping the same bass line through the whole loop, it's just like super boring, like nobody likes that, right? And then if we put something at the end, in the beginning, I usually just for this, I usually add something at the end. 
then it sounds like really, really cool. So let me show you another track with this example. All right, so let me show you this concept in another track. So you can see that we have this loop and this is basically the end of the loop, the end of the bar. This is sort of like the next uh, step we could say. And listen to the baseline and listen to how it changes over time. You can check now, let's check in solo, so you can really feel the difference. Maybe we can remove these two, so it doesn't overlap. Right, and all together it just sounds so, so nice. So this technique is like super, super simple. You can see that with this one, what I've done, I played with a different rhythm and I played with a different sound. So like the key takeaway is to add variation, add some fills. Again, you can combine that with uh, layering, right? What we talked about as well. You can combine that with automation. In fact, that's, that's what I've done. If you listen again, oh, actually for this one. So the filter is opening and then we have this like intensity and then we go back and it sounds really, really good. All right. Now, rhythm variation. So this one is going to be really, really interesting one. So this is the screenshot from the track. So first drop, the one that you just heard, it's a progressive bass, um, progressive house, bass rhythm and the sound. But then yesterday at night, I was like thinking, Hmm, maybe I want to do another bass line and I came up with with a second pattern that I'm gonna show you But it's different. It's more like tick house bass and rhythm like and, and, and sound overall So uh, listen to this drop just once again for sake of reference uh, It's more like a progressive vibe for for this one And in solo again. All right, so uh, this is the, just the bass and the drums. And now if we listen to this one, this is going to be a bit different. This is more like of my signature style that I like. this one a bit. And now if you listen to this one, this is going to be like a whole different vibe. I wanted to share this technique with you because this is something that I just came up yesterday. I was like, hey, I need to share that. And the new drop, it sounds like way different to the first one. And again, we are playing on the contrast. We are adding something new. And for the listener, that's going to be really exciting. So let's listen. Here's the, again, the transition that I've just talked about. I'm loving this track. Let me know what you guys think in, in the comments below. So yeah, play with the rhythm, play with the different melodies. It's always cool to just have something new in the track. So really simple example. I didn't change it a lot, but in fact, it's so nice. I just, I just love the vibe. Uh, and the next one is going to be really interesting one for quite some time. I was struggling with making powerful, with making warm, uh, kind of low end, the kick and the bass. And the secret is super simple. It's just like this guy, fat filter, 
say tim to uh, and what i can say saturation is the key to good sounding basses uh low end kicks because it gives a lot of warmth and power so let me just show you uh saturation and side chain for example in this track So this is without, like, what is that? And now with saturation, you can do like this if you like more mm, deep bass lines. So depending like on the vibe that you're looking for. And with the dynamic snar, we can really control the thickness, the power. Something like that, like. And then we can emphasize the click, the top end uh, for the kick and for the bass. So sometimes I may put uh, extra saturation on my bass line. The way I've done with this one is I put it on the group where, where my kick and the bass is. And just like this, sounds amazing. And, and one more thing, just look at this. So without the saturation, the peaks are at minus 10. And with saturation, we have less peaks and it feels much more powerful. So yeah, you can put something like this on individual channel on the baseline, uh, but the key here is putting that on the group because it really glues the sound together. And uh, one more thing that I want to share with you is going to be the side chain. So I'm a huge fan of like really, really aggressive sort of uh, side chain. And in the past, I just done side chain, let's say like just on the very low frequencies. And to me, in most tracks, that's not the case. So with, with that, it just sounds like this. It's not bad, but I like it when it sounds like this. Really like that pumping effect, the classic one. I like that and, and saturation, side chain, that's the key to killer tech house bass lines. All right guys, so now let's talk about my favorite technique that I call the elegant bass technique, which is top secret. Of course not, I'm just kidding. And just to give you a bit more about that is I'm a huge fan of elegant, of soft sound when it comes to music, like overall, especially like electronic dance music. I do like aggressive sounds, but in most cases, that's really, really not my thing. And let me show you this track and just take a listen to the bass, how you feel, uh, how does it sound to you? I would say that this is, so to me, this type of bass is really, really elegant. So what is really like the elegant uh, bass sound? So the way I do it is, first of all, it should be soft. It shouldn't be like really too aggressive, too distorted. The filter cutoff is usually like pretty close. So it's really soft again. And one thing that I really, really like for those sort of elegant bass lines is octave jumps. This is so, so cool. You could use that even if you don't want to make an elegant bass, but really the key is to making your basses super soft, like vintage, maybe even vinyl to some degree and using octave jumps. And when you do it this way, bass lines, they will sound amazing. And this is my sort of bass in most tracks. Usually my bass is sound like this. And uh, you can play a little bit with it, with it cut off. So deep bass, really subby, really soft to me. That's I would call an elegant bass line. So this is it guys. Those are the 10 techniques for writing 
killer tech house baselines. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, comment, let me know what you think. And if you guys want to take your music to the next level, if you want to work with me one on one, I'm going to put my Instagram down below in the comments. Just shoot me a message and we'll chat. So that was it. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one this week.